Good morning, everyone. We're delighted that you're here. We're going to first try to turn our attention um, as we open our hearts um, for this uh, morning office. I was thinking this morning, last night we had a great um, sharing time with Brian Zond. And one of the things that was brought up last night that I loved was um, uh, the comment that if we don't regularly get disappointed, <laughs> in our prayer life, then maybe we're not praying big enough prayers. Um, I thought of that text in Ephesians. It says now, it says Ephesians 3.20. It says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And uh, when you think about that, and you think about some of the prayers we pray, even in the, um, uh, the daily office, prayers for the peace of the whole world are prayers that we'll utter for, um, whether it's God cure, bring cure for this virus, or healing to every person affected. You know, we're asking these really big prayers. And um, uh, I, I think of that, if, if we pray big enough prayers, um, and contend for them, we should realize that there'll be times when we're disappointed. And the very idea that if we're never disappointed, we might be praying too safe a prayers. Because there seems to be a kind of tension in faith that we need to carry. There's, you remember the Psalms that we read often are both uplifting and orienting. And then there's Psalms that kind of sound like we've been disoriented. And uh, one of them, example, Psalm 77 where the psalmist says, has God forsaken to be gracious or has he in his anger withdrawn his compassion? So I think you see this kind of dance between this deep cry for change and this call to ask God for these big things over against the fact that that's not always met. And yet we're still supposed to cry and we're still supposed to ask and we're still supposed to cry out. So with that in mind, let's um, just simply open our hearts try to get centered this morning. And then a Misty, if you'd put up the liturgy for us. Um, actually scroll down to where we do the, um, yeah, the inviatory. And let's begin. Oh Lord, Open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Then let's do the jubilate together. Be joyful. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious and his truth endures. I lost my place, I'm so sorry. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures from generation to generation. And then we do the Psalms. Psalm 68. I'll do the first part to the asterisk, and then if you'd follow along, we're going to think through verse 18. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him also flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so shall you drive them away. And as wax melts before the fire, so let the ungodly perish before the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. O oh, sing unto the Lord and sing praises to his name. Magnify him who rides upon the heavens. 
The Lord is his name. Rejoice before him. He is a father of the fatherless and defends the cause of widows. God in his holy habitation. He is the God who gives the solidarity a home and brings the prisoners out of captivity. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> but lets the rebellious dwell in a desert land. Oh God, when you went forth before the people. When you went through the wilderness. The earth shook and the heavens poured forth rain at the presence of God. Even as Sinai also was moved at the presence of God, who is the God of Israel. You, O oh God, sent a gracious rain upon your inheritance. And refreshed the land when it was weary. Your congregation found a dwelling there. For you, O oh God, of your goodness have provided for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed the tidings. Kings and their armies fled. They fled. And the woman at home divided the spoil. Though you have lain among the sheepfolds, yet shall you be like the wings of a dove that are covered with silver and whose feathers shine like gold. When the Almighty scattered kings, it was as if it snowed in Zalman. As the hill of Bashan, so is God's hill. Even a high hill as the hill of Bashan. Why look with envy on you high hills? This is God's hill on which it pleases him to dwell. Surely the Lord will abide on it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. And the Lord has come from Sinai into the holy place. You have gone up on high. You have led captivity captive and received gifts from men. Even from your enemies that the Lord God might dwell among them. And then we do the glory be together. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now our first reading. A reading from Mark 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written about him. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. And then let's do the bottom of page 19, the Benedictus Song of Zechariah. Together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And our second reading. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all do works of miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a, a, a way, still a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and have all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to move, remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I might boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, these texts are, and these prayers are to build faith in our hearts. And the reason that's so important is because unless we mix trust with the things that we hear, the Hebrew writer said, none of this really matters, but it's when we mix our hearts with it. And at this point in the office is where we stand together and we declare our faith because our faith has been enriched by what we've heard, what we've prayed. And uh, we have about 25 of us on here today, so this is a good thing. We're going to lift our voices together, and then we'll go into some direct praying. So let's say this together, the Creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord is our cry, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And then together we pray boldly as he gave us the prayer to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then I'm going to pray um, a prayer for us, this, for those of us that are in uh, kind of isolation today. Just listen to this as I pray, and then we'll go into our um, Friday prayer. Almighty God, our times are in your hand, and we call upon you in this hour of our need. When we are lonely and must stand apart, be our strength, O sovereign Lord, and calm in our hearts in the midst of the raging seas. Be our refuge in our dwelling place. Sanctify to us this time drawn away from others, even as your son, O Father, drew away to a lonely place for prayer. 
Deepen our understanding of our need for you, O Lord, that every breath may be a whisper of the Spirit's prompting, a renewed searching of the deep things of God. Stir up in us this great act of intercession, that we may spend our time apart in prayer for the world that you created and that you desire to sustain. Bless us in our turning toward you and make us a blessing to those who stand in need of you, the whole fragile earth. All this we ask in the name of the great physician, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray this intercession. I'm sorry, I missed that. Let me go back. Oh Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. Oh Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Amen. Laura Lotta, would you, un, if, you're, if you're there and you can unmute yourself, would you pray this, uh, the collect for endurance is on the bottom of page 23. It starts, Almighty God, who's most dear son. Sure. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And then, Father Preston, welcome from Nashville. Why don't you lead us in the prayer for mission? If you do that middle one, O oh God. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let's go ahead and, and take a couple of moments and pray for specific issues. Um, we've been carrying, um, Ali, your situation. Do you have an update for us? I know you haven't had the best news. Um, my father-in-law was moved to St. Francis. Um, uh, unfortunately, not in the same room because they're, they have like, these negative pressure chambers and all that, but um, he is nearby. My mother. Ali's mother-in-law is also in the hospital in grave condition. Yes. Um, yeah. They're saying they're going to start comfort care probably today for her. Um, so they don't know what else to do. Yeah. Well, we're going to, you know, we, we stand and we ask God for big things and we're going to keep standing and asking God to turn this around um, until there's nothing to be turned around. So God, we lift up Ellie's parents, grand, our parents in law. We, and Brian and Ellie, and we ask you to, in the midst of all this disruption, in the midst of all this uncertainty, in the midst of the ground shaking, thank you, you're present with them. And we are behind them in our hearts and ask you, as we all believe, we ask you prayers that um, are bigger than maybe we can think or imagine and dream. We ask you for this to turn. We ask you for this to be saved. We ask you for something to happen that turns the tide of this for the good. We ask you for strength in the midst of all this as we look to you with a sense of um, no control, but just trust. Move in this situation, we pray through Christ our Lord. For what else or whom else should we pray? Um, Michael's mother, uh, went to the hospital through ambu ambulance last night for difficult mm. breathing. Um, she's been sick. I'm not sure if it's COVID-19, um, but she now she has pneumonia and she's had heart problems. So she's in the mm. hospital now and her husband has dementia 
so now he's alone. Um, not sure. Uh, yeah, so it's just a kind of messy situation. So sorry. Why don't you lead us in that prayer, Misty? Father of mercy, I lift up uh, Beverly to you. Lord, I pray for healing in her body, strength in her heart. Um, I pray for wisdom in the doctors. If this yes. is COVID-19, Lord, I just pray for, for healing and recovery in her body. Lord, give her strength as she as her body fights off whatever this is going on and um father i just i lift up jerry to you i pray for protection and comfort for him while beverly's in the hospital and just protection i don't know what else to ask for in his state of dementia i just thank you father for your hand on their life i know they love you and they trust you and will continue to do so in jesus name amen oh, so sorry what else anyone else Okay, well, let's go ahead and pray the general thanksgiving. Oh, you know what we should do? Let's, let me uh, pray for the, uh, this uh, whole pandemic thing and just in a general prayer. Um, in fact, let me share this. I don't know if I can share the screen while you're sharing a screen, Misty. I don't know if it's possible. Let me see here. Can you guys see that? Um, let me have... Chance, can you can you see the screen? Can you pray? Uh, take your mute off, as, or are you just listening by phone? No, I can pray. Why don't you pray that prayer in time of pandemic, please? Yes. Thank you, sir. This hour we turn to you, O oh Lord, in full knowledge of our frailty, our vulnerability, and our great need as your mortal creatures. We cry to you as one human family, unsure of the path ahead, unequal to unseen forces around us, frightened by the sickness and the death that seem all too real to us now. Stir up your strength and visit us, O Lord. Yes. We are shield and rock and hiding place. Guide our leaders, our scientists, our nurses and doctors. Give them wisdom and fill their hearts with courage and determination. Even this hour, O oh Lord, a season of blessing for us, that in fear we find you mighty to save, and in illness or death we find the cross to be none other than the way of life. All this we ask in the name of the one who bore all our infirmities, even Jesus Christ, our risen and victorious Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, go ahead uh, and share the last... Um text if you would misty there we go and let's say this together almighty god father of all mercies we your unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made we bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life let's just pause there for a second just call some to mind the human experience, your own health, the people that are touching your life, God's provision, the fact that your voice matters in the world, all the blessings of this life. We're thankful, Father. Let's continue. But above all, for your immeasurable love, in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all the ages. Amen. Jason, I wonder if you would um, go ahead and pray the uh, prayer of St. John Chrysostom for us. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. 
And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. And then let's do that last one. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I pray today that our prayers will be big, so big that we get some disappointment because we're trusting that big. And may God, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you today and be full of grace. Have a wonderful day. I hope you can join with us tonight on The Age. We have Reverend Janice is going to be sharing, um, talking about just how to process through some about your kids, what to communicate with them, and, and it's going to be wonderful. So Godspeed to you. Have a wonderful day.